Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about units and measures, which is a type of measurement and data question. We're going to be looking at angle questions in particular. So to begin, let's read a short description on what we can expect angle questions to look like. Angle questions require the knowledge of different types of angles, including acute, right, obtuse, straight, reflex, and the revolution. It may also involve angles within 2D shapes, and generally knowledge in these areas is also required. Other terms that may be used include external and internal angles, where external refers to the outer angle formed by two intersecting lines. It is also good for students to understand how to calculate the angle sum of various 2D shapes and have basic conceptualization of how large or small various angle sizes may be. More difficult questions may require the use of angles on parallel lines such as the co-interior, alternate and corresponding angles. Okay, so we're looking at generally a very big overview of angle related questions. There are definitely lots of areas within this um, topic, so let's go through each of those in more detail. So the description said that there's a bunch of different types of angles. We're told that there's acute ones, right ones, and the list goes on. So acute angles are any angles that are less than 90 degrees. It's often easy, oops, spelled it wrong. It's often easy to remember that acute angles are the smallest type of angle because the letter A kind of looks like the acute angle. Now the next angle is the right angle. So right angles are when the angle is exactly 90 degrees and is usually represented with this little square as an angle instead of a little curve that you see in every other angle type. The next angle is called the obtuse angle. So obtuse angles have to be bigger than 90 degrees. But they are smaller than 180 degrees. So if I actually write that properly, it's got to be smaller than 180 degrees and bigger than 90 degrees. This is, by the way, the Greek symbol theta, and it's generally just a symbol that mathematicians all agree to call what the angle is. So uh, if you're not too sure about this symbol, just replace it with any other letter that you're familiar with since that also does the same job. The next angle is the reflex angle. So reflex angles are the case scenario where the angle is a bit bigger than 180 degrees, but it's still smaller than 360 degrees. And finally, the last is the, the revolution, which is a full 360 degree angle. Uh, also, there would be the straight angle, which is just a straight line, and it's also exactly equal to 180 degrees. So those are always handy in labeling the types of angles that we see in different types of shapes. The next kind of names that we need to be familiar with is the internal and external angles, which the description talks about. So they're just fairly straightforward. Just like the name suggests, if you have any kind of 2D shape, then an internal angle is the angle that's formed inside of the shape. So those would be all of these angles over here. External angles are just the ones on the outside of the shape, so those would be these angles here. We can also see this uh, scene here in the example where you've got the internal and external angle here. Now, uh, what we can do with this information is that we can then use it to figure out the angle sum of various 2D shapes. Uh, one of the very common laws that we use with angles is the fact that the angle sum of a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. So if you add all the three corners of the triangle together, it always adds up to 180. This information basically becomes the basis of how many angles there are, what is the angle sum of any kind of regular polygon. So for example, if you wanted to figure out what the angle sum of 
what is, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a hexagon. If we wanted to figure out how many angles are there in the hexagon, what you do is you take the, the corners and divide them up into triangles. So now we can see that there are one, two, three, four triangles, and we can see that the corners are basically just composed of the three angles of the triangle. So what that means is that the angle sum of a, this hexagon or any hexagon is the number of triangles, which is one, two, three, four, times by the angle sum of each triangle, which we know is 180 degrees. So that would then give us the angle sum as 720 degrees. Now you'll actually notice that whenever you try to do this kind of technique to any kind of shape, what you'll see is that the number of triangles you can make is always going to be two less than the number of sides in the shape. So let's just do one more example with an octagon. Take an octagon and divide it into the different triangles by joining the each from I'm sorry, from one corner to each of the diagonals of the shape, we are left with one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. So the angle sum of an octagon is found by six times 180. So what that means is that the angle sum of any shape can always be found by this formula. And the N just refers to the number of sides in the shape, just as you saw in these two examples. Okay, so those would be the major points that we want to talk about when we're discussing angle type questions. Let's see if we can apply that knowledge through this example question here. Here we see Danica who has drawn an isosceles triangle inside a square as shown below. It's known that the base angle of the triangle is 64 degrees. Knowing that, what is angle X? Okay, so we talked about how we know what an angle sum of the triangle is always going to equal to. It's always equal to 180 degrees. Now, we're dealing with a very special type of triangle, and that is the isosceles triangle. Those are triangles where two sides of the triangle are equal, which causes two of its base angles to be equal as well. So these two angles are exactly the same. So we actually know what degree these angles are. The question tells us that it's equal to 64 degrees. So if we know that the addition of all three angles is equal to 180, we could also hypothetically figure out this top angle as well. Now, that isn't as relevant to this question, however. What the question says is that we want to figure out this degree. And the fact that we are dealing with a square, or the triangle is inside the square, which, which means that this angle is um, an angle that we actually know. We know that for squares, they have a unique property where each of the corners are actually all right angles. So they are all equal to 90 degrees. This is also partially because the angle sum of a square um, is going to be equal to 360 degrees since you can make two triangles and we talked about how the formula gives us the um, angle sum is 360. So if you've got 360 degrees as the total angle sum and we've got four corners, then each of the corners must be 90 degrees. So we know this information all from the question. So this is then enough pieces of the puzzle to figure out the answer. Since we know what this angle is equal to, 90 degrees, then obviously if you add the two angles together, it must give us 90 degrees. So we can use that information to easily figure out that x is equal to 90 minus 64 degrees, which means that x is equal to 26. So the correct response is option D. So this question kind of shows us how important it is to understand how angles are related to the different types of 2D shapes and their properties. Knowing that allowed us to quickly figure out the answer to the question. So that would be all the techniques that I would utilize for angle related questions. Thanks everyone so much for watching.